got an ear tonight. You got half an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the church. Let's open up our ears tonight in Jesus' name as a man God comes. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord in the Bible. Amen. Can we give Jesus a hand of praise? Amen. Can we magnify the Lord? and hurts and, but that's what happens when you are on the move yeah. amen. amen if you don't if you just stand still you know you don't encounter anything amen. you know you can't get the car wrecked stay at the house but as soon as you begin to go somewhere you know there's chances there's there's, there's a risk involved amen I just thank God for what is happening here at Scott's Hill amen looking forward to the remainder of this Youth conference, Amen. You know it's two two night deal, right? I didn't say the best for last. I, I, I brought it. I brought it tonight. So if you didn't come, they just missed it. Amen. You know sometimes you want to say, "Well, I'll, I'll you know go do a warm up the first night and then we'll hit it heavy the second night." I just brought it on tonight. So, Amen. They 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 didn't come that tomorrow. They'll get the leftovers. <laughs> God is good. God is God either way. Yeah. Amen. But I do feel like I got a word from the Lord. Amen. And it does kind of in a, be in alignment with the, the theme of the, the uh, youth conference's uh, momentum. Amen. The title of the message tonight would be Don't Lose Momentum. Uh, I feel in the Holy Ghost that, that some of you have lost your momentum. Amen. But tonight, we're going to get our momentum back. Amen. Tonight, I wish somebody would believe me. Tonight we're gonna get a fire back. Tonight we're gonna rekindle, we can pull you out of the sometime about it. Hallelujah. We're gonna stir up that gift that's on the inside of us. Hallelujah. God, let it burn tonight, Lord, let it burn. Rekindle the fire. The breath of God breathe upon our coals and our ashes. And let it burn again. Hallelujah. You can remain standing. While you're standing, we'll go ahead and go to the word of the Lord. Philippians chapter 1, verse 5. Hallelujah. I feel I feel something strong in the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. If you allow me, amen, give me the liberty. Pastor, if I get out of hand or get out of line, you just tell me to stop. You tell me to sit down, but I'm going to try to obey the Holy Ghost as much as I can tonight. Amen. I, I, I do remember my family, my wife, uh, they're... They're at home. I didn't want to bring her off too far in case something started moving. And um, so she's about 38 weeks pregnant. And uh, we went to Dr. Tuesday. Everything's fine. Everything's good. We'll have a big, big baby girl. And so we're excited about that. Uh, so just pray that uh, everything is well, at least until I get back home. And then, you know, we'll be ready then. Amen. Philippians chapter 1, verse 5. Amen. It said, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. You know, that, that fits all of us. Whenever you started until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, he will perform. Everybody say, he will perform. Until the day of Jesus Christ. 
How long will he perform it? Until the day of Jesus Christ. If he begun it in you, if he started a work in you, if he started a fire in you, if he started a ministry in you, I feel the Holy Ghost already. Our God, be confident that he that has started and has begun it in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now some of us have, have, have forfeited it. Some of us have laid it down. Some of us have quit cultivating it. Amen. But Jesus, he said, he will, he will perform it until the day if you will give it to him. If you allow him to work it in you, he will do it. He will not cease to do it. He will not stop. Amen. He is an all-consuming flame. Amen. He never stops burning. He never sleeps. He never goes out by night. He's an all-consuming flame. And he is able to perform it until the end. Hallelujah, may be seated tonight. Hallelujah, may the Lord give me the tongue of the learned tonight to speak a word in season to them that are weary. <coughs> Hallelujah, momentum. Amen, it is the, the, basically the energy gained by a moving object. I'll say that again, the energy <coughs> gained by a moving object. In other words, I can't have any momentum if I'm standing still. My car can't create any momentum if I don't put it in drive and go. Amen. So in order to have this momentum and gain the energy, we've got to be moving forward. Amen. We must be on the move. Amen. A lot of times the devil, he gets us because we, we stood still, we took a break, and we, we sat down, and we just need a little rest. Amen. But if we're going to move forward, amen, you got to understand that the devil can't catch you if you're moving. The devil can't catch you if you're running towards God. The only time that he begins to catch you, and he begins to get you, is when you prevail to keep moving. You become stagnant and you become still. Amen. And you take a break. Amen. And you rest a while. Then the enemy begins to creep in. But as long as you're on the move, as long as you're fighting, as long as you're running, the devil can't catch you. Hallelujah. My Lord, hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. But the only time that he begins, when we begin to sit still, we become stagnant. We become stale. Hallelujah. And stale praise doesn't move God. Amen. But we have to be, we have to cultivate the praise. Amen. We have to create and, and, and motivate ourselves by the Spirit of God. Our past victories. Our past victories. Anybody have some victories in the house? I know you've had failures, but I don't know if you had some victories. Hallelujah. I know we've had failures. I know we made mistakes. I know we had hiccups. Amen. But I want to talk about our victories tonight. Amen. Your past victories is what energizes your momentum today. The victories I had yesterday is what gives me a drive and a motivation to step in today and fight my battles today. Because I know, amen, that God already delivered the enemy yesterday. And today, he's the same God. He's able to give me my victory today. Hallelujah, but I can't live in yesterday. Amen. But today I'm fighting a battle. Today I'm in the middle of a storm. Amen. And I need a breakthrough today. Amen. The only thing I can hang on to is what God has done for me in the past. He's been too good to me. If God's been good to you, won't you give my hand a type of praise? Hallelujah. My God has been too good to me. Hallelujah. He's brought me a mighty long way. I don't know about you. I don't know how you feel tonight. But my God has been good to me. Hallelujah. Your past victories is what energizes your momentum. Hallelujah. And if we're going to gain any momentum, we've got to be on the move. So I'm here tonight to encourage somebody to reignite the flame inside your soul. And to begin to worship again. Begin to move forward again. All you got to do is put one step in front of the other. 
to be able to move. That's all you've got to do. God's not asking a lot from you. He's not asking you to, to just jump through hoops, but he's asking you to just move forward. Amen. Move forward. Right. And I'm going to speak to some of us tonight. God, we've got to move ahead. Amen. The only way we're going to get from where we're at to where he wants us to be is that we move forward. Amen. Amen. There's the fire on our altar. You read in the Old Testament when the tabernacle, when they built the fire to go in the altar, the, the brazen altar. Amen. That fire was to never burn out. Amen. That fire was supposed to burn continuously. Amen. There was there, there was those there that, that fed the flame. Amen. They made sure that there was always a flame at the altar. Amen. And where, where our, our power is and our momentum is, is at the altar. That's where we get our, 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 our energizing from is the altar. Hallelujah. Have you ever been weary and tired and you come into God's house and, and you just make your way to the altar and you praise God and all of a sudden you find strength in your body. Amen. You feel strength in your soul. Amen. Our fire that's on our altar cannot burn out. Amen. It is to never burn out, but we got to keep feeding that fire. we got to keep feeding the flame. Hallelujah. I had a, a young man when I was beginning my, my walk with God, he told me, because I was, you know, just like any young man here, young woman, you, you start out living for God, you got the Holy Ghost, shout and praising God, and all is good. Amen. You feel like a firecracker. Yeah. And he said, brother, he said, and he wasn't necessarily apostolic, but he said, brother, you be careful. Amen. And because you'll burn out. Yeah. Well, my God, that's been 10 years, and I still got the fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, I still got the fire. Yeah. Hey, not because I let the fire unattended, because I continue to feed the fire. I continue to feed my flame. Can I tell you tonight, if you don't feed your flame, your fire will burn out. But as long as you feed the flame, Normal anymore. 
Amen. And what used to be bad isn't bad, but yet they call it good. And what was good, they call it bad. And times have changed, and they're they're changing fast. Amen. They're, they're, they're changing at a great momentum. At a great rate, things around us are changing. Amen. And But can I tell you that the church is also moving forward. The church is moving ahead. Don't think one minute, amen, that everything is moving and the church is standing still. Amen. But as I stand here tonight, the church is on the move. The church has, my God, the church has the greatest momentum that it has ever had in its history. Amen. Now, you may not be a part of it. You might be stagnant and you might be still, but the church of the living God has the greatest momentum that it has ever had. Burn out. 
because you failed to feel. You failed to, to take close attention to what God has given you. And you failed to feed your friend. You may not make it to the end. And when I used to play ball, we would we'd be all fired up at the start. You know, if you ball player, I know they got some in here. But if you're a ball player, you football, baseball, whatever it is. And, and I just remember in football, we would be so fired up at the start of the game. We felt like, we felt like champ. We, you know how they, they, they put that paper up over the end zone and you bust through there like champion. You're like, you're going to win the game. And the fact is that like one of them teams going to win it, but they both look like they're going to win it. <laughs> but one of them was going to be the loser. Right. But when it first started, it seemed like both teams had the momentum. They was ready. First play of the game, you know, everybody's excited. And then just as that one team begins to play, and maybe that team starts making some leverage on the other team and start pressing against the, the end zone. It seems like that team gains the momentum of the game. Now the tension's on the other game. Well, now we gotta, we've got to put up our defense. We've got to try to stop this team. And, and that team has got the momentum. Amen. And, 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 and we're both, at the beginning of it, we were both expecting the victory. You know, felt like we were going to win the game. But as the game began, and we began to get wore down, you know, the, the teams that win are the ones that can still fight in the fourth quarter. And we come from a small school. You know, we didn't have but enough to fill the team, fill the, fill the field, you know. And we played both sides of the ball. And so most of the time we were wore out come fourth quarter. We didn't have no substitutes. And, but you could feel that if you've been to a ball game, maybe you, you've seen one, went to one, watched or been a part of one, you can, you can feel when the momentum of that game shifts. Yeah. And a lot of times it is something that you just you can just feel it. You know, you see the excitement. And then what happens when one team scores a touchdown? If they got a band, they fire that thing up, they make noise, they're singing, they're dancing, they're just beating the drums because they've got the momentum. All right. And the other teams listen to how the band play, they just they well, I wish they would just shut up. I wish they would choke. <laughs> you ever been on that loser team? You know, I've been there. <coughs> I hate when the other team started because we, we didn't have a band. All we had was some cheer, a few cheerleaders and the, the home team, home crowd, you know, and it wasn't very big. But you could feel the momentum shift in the middle of the game. And at that game, that, that other team that's winning, the momentum's on their side, they would, they would be pressing in. And, and if we made one big play, maybe we intercepted the ball and started going the other way. All of a sudden, bam, the momentum shifted the other way. And every time the momentum was shifted, it, like I said, there was a band. That band would begin to play. The band would begin to make noise. And, and they would shout. And the children would dance. And they would holler and scream because they had the momentum. Can I tell you this? And most of the time, the team that kept the momentum was the team that was the loudest. Hallelujah. This is a preach. I wish somebody would get this. If you know how you can keep your momentum by making some noise. Amen. When you know when the devil's got the momentum because you got your arms crossed, you ain't talking, you ain't saying praise God, you ain't clapping your hands. That's because the enemy has got your momentum. But if you begin to praise the Lord and you begin to dance and you begin to hit the high sounding symbols, all of a sudden the momentum of the game begins to shift. And I feel like praising. Begin to play. 
as that piano begins to sing, <coughs> as them voices begin to sing the praises of the Lord, and we begin to clap our hands, and we begin to lift our hands, and we begin to shout the voice of triumph. All of a sudden, you can feel it in the service when momentum shifts. Amen. That's what we need tonight. We need a shift. Amen. We need the momentum to shift. Hallelujah. You've been, you've been wore out. Amen. You've been weary. You're down and out, depressed. Amen. We need a momentum shift. Amen. We need to make some noise. We need to clap our hands. We need to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He said, clap your hands, all you people. And make the joyful Moses, Aaron, and Hur 
went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses <laughs> held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and they put it under him and they, he sat there on. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands. The one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar, and he called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. But as long as Moses' hands were lifted up, Israel prevailed. Israel had the momentum. But when Moses' hands were let down, then Amalek had the momentum and Amalek prevailed. But as long as you're praising God, I don't care if you're in the middle of the flame. I don't care if you are in the middle of your storm. If you can learn to praise God when all hell has broke loose at your house, amen, you can prevail over the enemy. You can stand and, and trump on the adversary as long as you're praising God. Even in the midst of trouble. Hallelujah. But I want you to listen to this. Jehovah Nisi means the Lord my banner. This is a sign of momentum. When they held that, they had that altar. There's like a banner saying the Lord my banner. It was a sign of momentum. It was a sign of moving forward. It was a sign of victory. Amen. Somebody needs to lift up the banner tonight. Somebody needs to lift up the name of Jesus. Because it's a sign to the enemy. Amen. That you have prevailed. It's a sign. I want somebody to hear me. It's a sign of your enemy that you have the momentum. Does anybody have the momentum tonight? There's some of you that need momentum. Some of you have lost it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and, and worship. I want us to worship. I want us to regain momentum. Hallelujah. Because I feel a shift. Maybe it's been a while since you run. Maybe it's been a while since you jumped. Maybe it's been a while since you've been shattered in the yard.
God. 